What's up with that? What's up with that? Perfect. Don't worry, be happy, that's right. Hey, oh, it's showing we're live? Okay, well, I don't know what the hell. This is saying I'm not connected here. All right, so we're there, right? Hey friends, don't worry, be happy. It's totally cool, man. When you have this in your hand, it pretty much just makes it to where there's, there's zero problems, right? Let me make sure I'm, I'm live. Okay, yeah, I'm live. For whatever reason, it's saying audio video not available and I'm not connected at all. So sorry about that. It's a train wreck anyhow. Hey, friends, welcome. First off, what's the date? I'm getting lost in the days here. Doing lots of meditating these days. It's the 25th of March. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to have a blast here today. We're going to stay up. I'm so glad that you guys are here. I do these as much for me that I do than I do them for you because it really lets me connect with you guys. Uh, we're in a really unique place in history right now, and this is an opportunity for us to show our true spirit, the, the true essence of who we are uh, through kindness, through love, and what have you. There's something happening in the universe. I don't care if you believe in zero. There's something very unique happening in the universe right now. And I'm, one, very excited. It's challenging, but it's always those challenging times where we find our inner strength. So I'm glad that you guys are with me today. We're going to have a blast. We're going to stay up. Please keep that chat positive. If anything negative comes across, there's plenty of that out there of people uh, going nuts and freaking out right now. It won't be accepted in this chat. It's nothing but love and good vibes here. And I'm very, very serious about that. I'm kind, but I'm very stern when it comes to that sort of thing, all right? So keep it cool, keep it nice, keep it kind, and let's show lots of love here today. I'm gonna show you today that you, if you play guitar, you know how to play the ukulele. It's super duper simple. So we're gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna get to your questions. It really makes me nervous looking at this thing and it says I'm not live, but I can see myself live right here. So I'm, I'm good there, right? Yeah, we're gonna talk about ukuleles today. We're gonna talk about guitars, we're gonna talk about uh, gutaleles, and we're gonna talk about how you guys know this stuff. Then we're gonna do some Q&A today, okay? Someone's saying I'm looking tired. You know, I got these lights coming up like this instead of down, so you're getting everything right now, pretty much, you know? All right, so we'll get to some questions here in just a moment. This will be a much shorter um, uh, lesson, if you will, because there's not much to show you other than you know this already. So the guitar... The ukulele, I should say, is basically the bottom four strings of the guitar, except it's tuned G, C, E, A. So in essence, we could take the acoustic guitar and we could capo up at the fifth fret. And essentially, now these are not tuned exactly to each other right now. It's just like maybe a quarter step off. I didn't have time to, to get them perfectly in tune before the broadcast. I apologize. But essentially... You know, that's G, C, E, A. So like the chords I was playing there. I'm just playing the bottom four strings there. And so essentially, if you take your guitar, take a capo, put it at the fifth fret, anything that you do on the top four strings is the ukulele. I won't say anything more about it because it's literally that simple. If I say anything more about it, it would be being redundant and it's going to confuse you. But essentially, bottom four strings of the guitar and act as this, as if this is the fifth fret. What do you mean act as if this is the fifth fret? Well, as far as like the names of the notes and what have you. But all the fun little caged system chords and what have you move up and down the fretboard in the same exact way. So for instance, you could hold this little D shape here, right? You guys know this shape, right? But that's not a D because if you took the guitar and you capoed it up at the fifth fret and then did that, 
it's gonna be something different, right? In fact, it would be a C, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. There's a C note. Right? So I think that was right. Um, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's right. Let me, let me figure this out for sure. But yeah. Yeah, there's my, there's my C. Yep, and that, and that, that indeed is correct. Uh, so literally all of the forms and what have you, uh, the chord forms, the scale forms, and everything work out the same exact way as if they were on the guitar. All the same little tricks that I show you inside the Unstoppable Guitar System on YouTube and what have you, they're all the same little tricks. You can do the same thing. So. Um, if you wanted to do the cage system, if you wanted to play, you know, the, the pentatonic scale. Okay. Now, one thing that throws people off is this string here is up an octave, but don't worry about that. It's the same by name. It's up an octave. It's just the ukulele. That's what they do on a ukulele. Okay. Now, this is a soprano ukulele. This is the, the most used or the the most purchased one this is a cordoba uh this is a 15 cm it's just a little cheapy and it does great i gave my good one to my daughter has a pickup in it and everything else but i have these on my gear store so if you want that um kit.com slash your guitar sage the link for that will be below this video just uh just look below uh, and i'm gonna double check here just to make sure <laughs> But yeah, yes, you'll see something that says gear. It's under there, okay? So if you want one of these, uh, go get one. Because there, you cannot be sad and play one of these. If you're sad and you play one, you will instantly become happy. It's just the truth. Uh, they're awesome. All right, now this is a Kala. And I loved this one because look at this, man. This is like if a ukulele had a baby. If a ukulele had a baby. It's a baby having a baby. Uh, this is, they call this a pocket uke, and it's pretty small. I'd need to have a pretty big pocket to put this guy in it, but, uh, but nonetheless, it's a real ukulele, really works and all the rest. This is the one that was in the, the video. Someone said, were the strings painted on? No, I have three of the strings pulled off, and I taped them down, and I stuck them in the sound hole so that I could teach my little guy, my, my buddy, my, my son, who's four, to teach him how to play the ukulele, but one note at a time, like I learned. Uh, that's how I learned, by just... Right? Super easy. So now he just has one string to play with, I tuck these other guys away, and he doesn't have to worry about it. Uh, and my daughter, who's 22, painted this when she was a little tight. Okay, so there's that. That's a soprano as well. And then this is a gutulele. If a, if a guitar and a ukulele had a baby, Gutulele. And you would play this one in the same way as you would a guitar. Except, again, it's as if the guitar is, it's as if this is a guitar, but we're capoed at the fifth fret. It's probably the same scale length, too, pretty, pretty close to it. So you can play all the same shapes that you're used to playing C, D, G, E, A minor, E minor, B7, F chord, whatever. But, the names of the notes are, are not the same. The chords won't be the same. They will be what they would be if you capoed at the fifth fret on the guitar and did all that. But it's super easy to get, okay? So like if you have a song with a one, four, five, and you were playing it in the key of C, even though this is not the key of C anymore, all the same structure works. What? Yeah, super cool. So there you go. So I told you, you know how to play ukulele. Literally, it's that simple. Oh yeah, and if you are like, man, I don't know, that just sounds too easy, then I have an entire book written on the subject. Uh, you can get that for free at Amazon if you are a Kindle subscriber. Uh, if you have Kindle Unlimited like I do, where I can just download books all the time and what have you, then you can get it for free on there. Otherwise, I think you can get it in my store. You can get it on yourguitarstage.com. You can get it in my gear store and that sort of thing. So pretty cool, right? Literally, 
You just learned a new instrument today. Look at your badass self. In fact, you learned more than one instrument today. You learned the soprano ukulele. You learned, or you learned the, um, is this alto? This is a concert. Sorry, I said this was a soprano. This is a concert. This is a soprano. You learned that and you learned the gutalele today. So you learned three instruments minimum today. <laughs> you go. Look at that. That's pretty cool, right? Awesome. Okay. Confusion cleared. I'm, I'm seeing somebody say it here. All right, beautiful. So friends, uh, welcome. We're going to have a blast here today. We're going to get some some Q&As here in just a moment. But let me just be another voice that you're hearing today um, and just say things are good. Things are challenging right now, but things have always been challenging since the day you were born, since you came out of your mama's womb. Uh, things were challenging. In fact, that was the most challenging thing ever was being born, okay? So life is a series of these, and these challenges make us grow. You can cower in a corner and be overwhelmed with fear until that gets really, 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 really tiring because I've done that before. Uh, and then you can wake up and go, well, I can just sit there in that corner and I can continue to be fearful, or at some point I could get off my ass and make the best of everything. And that's what we're doing here, and that's what you're gonna do, and that's what we do because we're champs and, and because that's the way we roll. So I'm really glad you guys are here today. We're gonna, we're gonna have um, a, a, a time here just getting to know each other and love on each other and everything else. B.L. Bowen said, just keep breathing, and I 100% agree, just keep breathing. It's a great time to start some meditation. I've been meditating like madness lately. And, um, and you're gonna start seeing the world change in beautiful ways. Yes, there's always going to be those that are focused on the negative. And there's, I, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, at least for some time, there's always going to be negative. There's, there has been. Uh, so I don't see that changing anytime soon. I could be wrong, I'm not very spiritually enlightened, but there are others that I follow that are. and. Uh, they talk about this, this new phase that we're going into. It's a new spiritual phase. Believe it or don't believe it, but it's changing. Uh, things are changing. People are, the lights are coming on. They're realizing what's important in life. Uh, and unfortunately, or fortunately, it, I wouldn't even say unfortunately, it just is. The way it is, uh, this is when we start listening, is when things start getting a little squirrely when our foundations are shook, when someone dies in our family, when we lose our job, when we go bankrupt, which I've done, and I've lost my job before, and I've gone and I've gotten divorced before, and I've lost my home before, and I've been this close to being homeless before. And there's lots of things that we get through in life. So be encouraged, you are not alone. These thoughts that are going in your head, fears and what have you, they're illusions because as soon as you can turn them on, you can turn them off. Uh, and just know that you're, we're all in this thing together and you're not the only person thinking the things you're thinking right now. So that's a good, that's a good thing, right? Subskip, this too shall pass. Thank you for the, for the, for the donation, my friend. Uh, this too shall pass, be safe, think about others, support local businesses, keep practicing, let's keep going. Amen, I'm with you, man. All right, let's get into some questions and uh, anything that you guys want to talk about today, let's talk about it. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Let's talk about guitars. Let's talk about ukuleles. Let's talk about spiritual things. Let's talk about whatever it is that's going to make you feel good today because that's what I'm here for. I love this time that we can do this, okay? All right, if you would, all caps and a question mark too. And by the way, at 1 p.m. today, we're gonna do something new. 1 p.m.? Yeah, 1 p.m. in about an hour and 45 minutes, I'm going to be doing a live interview on Instagram, okay? You've seen folks doing this lately. I didn't know it was possible until, I, until the quarantine, uh, which in Franklin, we just got officially locked down. Um, it happens, right? We figured it would happen. Um, where was I going? Okay, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> somebody's saying fear is important. And I don't disagree with you, but here's the deal. For millennia now, we have had fear in our lives. 
we hear a saber-toothed tiger and we're like, oh crap, what was that? Or we hear a hissing or a rattling on the ground, right? And that fear makes us go, whoa, 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 what is that thing? So fear is not important. So I would disagree with you there. Fear is not important. Attention is important. And there's a massive difference between fear and attention. If a bear is chasing me, thank you so much, John, for the donation. God is great and good will overcome the bad. In the end, 100%. I totally agree. This is, this is truth. Fear is not important. Attention is important. And, and, I, and my friend, I would say that you and I probably agree on this. So, um, Guitar Hero 10. I, I know what you're saying, but let's differentiate the two. Fear is not important. Attention is important. A bear is running after me. I can meditate and let that bear eat me, or I could go, whoa, 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 now's not the time. I need to run away from this bear. I run up a tree, bear's gone. There doesn't even need to be fear. There just needs to be attention, okay? For the same reason, you don't need to be fearing what's going on right now, but you do need to be attentive, and it would be kind, whether you believe that anything's going on or not, it would be a kind thing to maybe just wash your hands more to keep, keep, distance, you know, keep a little bit of distance. It doesn't mean that you can't get on Skype calls like we've been doing and meditate and play with your family and, and definitely keep connected, friends. During this time, keep connected. Whether you are on, um, you know, this, doing something like this live, whether you are getting together with your family, whether you're going inside and meditating, praying, uh, thinking good thoughts the whole nine yards. Dude, that stuff is powerful. It has absolutely changed my life. So a million of you, if everybody in here gave this thing a thumbs down and didn't agree with me, I would still know it's right because it's absolutely effing changed my life. And it can yours too, if it hasn't already. So just know that there's no need for fear, but attention is good. Same thing with guitar or anything like that. There's no need to fear. You just learn it, right? False evidence appearing real. Yeah, I love that. Love that. Look, man, we got a, a slew of winners in, in this chat right now. Uh, a slew of winners. So be looking, right? Every now and then you're going to see someone who's filled with fear. That's okay, because guess what? We're a family, and we should be helping each other out during this time. So we're not all on the same page. We're all in different ages. We all have different experiences in life. We all have different mindsets. Some of us uh, work on our mindset more than others. Some of, them, some of us work on it less. We're all in different places. So right now during this time, the most important thing, the message that I see over and over and over and over again, and I've never not seen this to be true, is kindness and love. Dear God, at the end of the day, it's the only thing that matters is kindness and love. That's it, man. Everything else is extra and may not even be needed. Okay, give me exercise for ear training. Yash, yeah, let's talk about it. So ear training, so like literally you could take any instrument, doesn't matter what it is, take any instrument and hum a melody, right? It's the first song that I learned on guitar. And I want to find the first note, okay? I'm going to hum it. I found it. So that's good. Once you find the first note, all the other notes are easy, are easier to find. Super easy. I don't have a great ear, but I just use some techniques that I teach you in my videos to show you how to do this. For more information on how to do this, by the way, that's your exercise, is take any song that you know. I don't care what it is. Don't worry, be happy. Ba 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 da 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 right? Ba ba now what air boot I don't know how to find that. Yes, you do. You're gonna do the same thing I did. I didn't know what the note was, I just searched for it. Okay? Again, nothing to be fearful about. You just get off your ass and do it. Okay, that's all it is. Ba 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 
I could keep going with it. So just take a melody that you know and love and, uh, and find it on your instrument. That is your exercise, okay? Once you get really good at that, I've got more, uh, like I've got a whole course inside of UGS that's on ear training. Otherwise, if you're on YouTube, uh, just search Your Guitar Stage Ear and you'll find that. And if you're in UGS, right, Unstoppable Guitar System, which you should be because it's free for you today. It's the link below, yourguitarstage.com slash UGS. You can get in there for free and you'll be privy to all this stuff that I'm telling you about or much of it, right? So uh, I have a whole course on ear training in there. Cool. Do Sandy, do, you, do I play bass? Yes, I do. And so do you, as I will show you in a few days. Okay. All right. P picks keep getting out of my hands when strumming. How to have a better grip on it. Okay, a couple things. Number one, get a thinner pick because right now when you're strumming, you're fighting the strings too much. So get a thinner pick. The other thing is, is just practice. So th between those two things, that will get your pick to stay in your hand better. Practice more, okay? Please tell, because I am curious if you've ever listened to any Hindu or Bollywood song, your view on it. I love uh, Indian music. I love Indian culture. Uh, I, I love Indian culture and I love Indian music. I love Indian food. Uh, whenever I'm at some of the Indian restaurants that I eat at, which we have a lot of them here because we have a big uh, Indian society, society uh, Indian you know there's a lot of Indians that live here and it's wonderful and I love it and uh, they always play that Bollywood music and I just can't stop watching because the girls are beautiful and the dancing's flipping awesome and the music's good so I love it yeah ah oh, beautiful thank you Rob excellent analogy and summary of our current environment amen brother yeah man think about it uh, if you go outside, you don't see birds and dogs and what have you worrying about it. You don't see, my, my little kid has no idea what's going on. Uh, and he's n none the wiser for it, right? Isn't that what you say? Um, none the wiser for it. It's like, just keep him out of, just keep him out of harm's way as much as you possibly can. Have fun. Like, that's the way we should be thinking. If you're sitting here looking at Twitter, I've done it. In fact, I just established a rule for myself two, three days ago because I don't look at that stuff hardly ever, but for whatever reason during this time, I'm like, okay, there's a couple people that I want to watch and I want to hear what they say, uh, and so I follow them, and in the meanwhile, I'm getting a bunch of BS, and I have muted a ton of people talking politics. Dear God, at a time right now, they're talking politics. Uh, so I muted a bunch of people, deleted a bunch of people, blocked a bunch of people. <laughs> I'm only listening to the people that know the truth, which is to be kind. Everything else is a bunch of psychobabble bullcrap. Being kind, I know that works, okay? Yes, don't cough in someone's face. There's some, But other than that, you don't know much. You want, this guy says one thing, this guy says something else. So really, you're just going to confuse yourself and, and freak yourself out. Don't do it, okay? How to keep ourselves motivated in the first stage of guitar learning. Okay, let's talk about this because I got a message from somebody last night. Well, it's on my phone. I can't look at it right now. But basically, they were like, I'm really frustrated with this. I'm, I don't feel like I'm cut out for this. Can you give me some sort of encouraging word? And I said, you are no different than everybody else who started playing guitar. Sorry, in a world where everybody wants to feel really special. You're no different in that you think that you're not special enough to play guitar. You think that you weren't born with some sort of talent. Uh, excuse, excuse, excuse. Bottom line, everybody gets frustrated with guitar. Everybody gets frustrated with a new language or a new thing that they're trying to do because they're trying to learn it very fast. You, I've never met somebody who's learned something quicker than they thought they would. So we're always pushing. I've got to learn this quicker. And it doesn't happen as quickly as we want to. So there's this frustration feeling. And then all of the doubting questions and the fear, just like what's happening right now, starts seeping in and you start questioning yourselves and thinking, oh, I'm different, or this is that, or, and you end up creating all sorts of scenarios that just don't exist, uh, like you don't have enough talent, or your fingers are too fat, or excuse, excuse, excuse. Your fing you maybe have ginormous fat fingers, I'm not denying that, but to say that that doesn't keep you from playing an instrument is ridiculous. See the guy with no arms that I talk about all the, all the time on YouTube playing with his toes. Why don't you tell him that your fingers are too fat? 
Why don't you tell him that you don't have talent? You know, why don't you tell him your excuses and see what he says to you? So bottom line, you, we all have the capability of doing any of these things that we want to do. Learn a new language, do meditate, learn to meditate, learn to, 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 uh, to cut back on our food, learn to stop smoking, learn to learn a new instrument, get off of social media as much. <laughs> We're not freaking robots. We can do all this stuff, okay? Do you have any tips on singing and playing at the same time with syncopated strumming patterns? Roscoe. Uh, forget the syncopated strumming rhythm pattern part. I get what you're saying. Uh, which, by, by the way, syncopated rhythm is when you're, when you're emphasizing the upbeat. It doesn't matter whether it's syncopated or not syncopated. Yes, I have a video for that. And I have a whole course for that inside of UGS. If you're in UGS, search singing. On YouTube, search your guitar stage singing and playing. And you'll see the video I'm talking about. It has, it has nothing to do with syncopation and everything. Yes, those, that's a variable in there. But... Uh, again, it has to do with focus and it has to do with breaking things down one measure at a time. Uh, also using what I call the inventory breakdown method, which is like making sure you know your lyrics, making sure that you know your melody, making sure that you know your chords and knowing all this stuff separately so that when you put them together, then it all comes together like that. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, Abdullah is saying, I'm in UGS standard and currently working on chord transitions, but having trouble between chords that have no mutual strings, like E minor to D or D minor. Any advices? Yes, and I like the way that you say that too. You know, basically, uh, we, we talk, you know, about, or I talk about taking inventory. I talk about this a lot. Taking inventory in your life, taking inventory with... Guitar chords, all the rest. Gosh darn it. I don't want this guy right now. Oh dear lord. I, I literally have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine instruments around my general vicinity right now. I've got a gutulele, I got three ukuleles, a gutulele, a baritone guitar, a, a Gibson, a Takamini. I've got faith guitar. I've got so many guitars around me right now in this little tiny space. So, you know, when I'm talking about inventory, right, taking inventory is taking stock. Uh, you can do this with any part of your life, but it's like taking a moment, like right now, taking a moment and going, what's going on? And so when we're talking about our chords, as opposed to just just plowing through things, and we do this with playing all the time, is we're wondering why we can't do a particular something instead of just taking a second and going, what is actually going on here? When I'm going from an E major to an E minor, what's happening? Oh, wait a minute. My fingers look the exact same. They're just going down a string, right? Light bulb moment goes on. It may not be huge, but it's big enough to where you go, oh, so really the only thing I have to do is move that little guy down, right? Or if you say, okay, well, when I go from a, a D major to a G chord, I don't have to lift my fingers up off the fretboard and then put them completely down again. In fact, that would be a wasted movement. Because look, this guy stays on the fretboard. Okay, there's two lessons in this. Number one, when you go from a D to a G, you don't move your finger. You can pivot off, off of that finger and that gives you a constant, a benchmark, something to hold on to, a rock, right? In a time of trouble, a rock in the middle of a river should you need it. Uh, so that is what that's for. If you just lift off like this, you're letting go of the rock and now you, uh, you're, there's gonna be a larger room for error, larger margin for error, right? So. You want to take inventory of what you're doing. In this case here with the question, he was saying like going from a, I think it was a D minor to an E minor. And he was saying that there's no association there. And sometimes there's not. There's no association between two chords. We have nothing to connect the two, right? Well, there you go. Um, that's okay. That happens, right? Stuff like that happens in life. So in this case here, what you want to do is you want to Think about where you're at. You're on chord one, we'll call it E minor. And then you think about chord two, where it is that you want to go. My goodness, it's like everything that I say could be applied to life, so strange, right? So here's where we are 
the D minor is where we want to go. Well, how the hell are we gonna get to D minor if we don't think about what D minor looks like, about where all our little fingers are gonna go, about which fingers are gonna go and when, how are we gonna get to it? Well, we could just like, I don't know, D minor, where's that D minor again? And you're looking and you're like, okay, this finger goes here. How about memorizing the chord first, right? And then when you move from chord to chord, it's gonna be quicker. Also, if you visualize it, if you see it in your mind's eye first, then you have a much better chance of pulling that chord up than not. And then when you're on the D minor chord, you're gonna do the same thing. All the work is done up here. It's not done here, it's done up here. So like I'm on the D minor chord and I'm thinking E minor. What most people do is they wanna just jump to the chord right away. They want it to just automatically be there. Guess what? It doesn't do that. Your brain has to do the work. So, you're on the D minor, you're thinking about the E minor chord. What does the E minor chord look like? Which finger's gonna go where? And I'm like literally visualizing the movement in my mind, I'm seeing it, and I don't move my finger until I've done the work, and then I move my fingers, and it's gonna be, you know, 50, 60, 70% faster, more efficient than not doing that. So do that. When you're going from chord to chord, or doing any sort of movement like that, that's what you need to do, is you need to think about whatever movement you're getting ready to do beforehand, okay? Okay. All right. <clears throat> yes. Meditation can help when turning your mind into your cheerleader that eggs you on and tells you you can do it. Indeed. Could you recommend a book, graph, or something that will help with naturally moving around the neck and being able to move scales anywhere on the neck, confused with the variations of the same scales? Uh, tubes. You need some basic music theory knowledge. First, start in the free course that I'm giving you today. Okay? Link is below. Yourguitarsage.com slash UGS. That is the number one place that if you are confused on the guitar that you should be going. It is the number one place. 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 Have you gone there yet? Because if you haven't and you're asking basic questions on guitar, it's the number one place and it's free and I'm giving it to you and it's like the first 30 something lessons that are gonna get you through over the hump of playing, of, of understanding how to play guitar. And if you're not there and you're just bouncing around on YouTube, good luck, but I'm giving you the answer right there. That's what you wanna do. And then tubes, but don't do it beforehand. Go take those, those first few lessons first because you have to understand the basics of the neck before you can understand these concepts. Then once you do that, on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Scales and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Or obviously, if you're in UGS, go there straight away, okay? If you've been through those beginner, those beginner videos first, okay? Have I any experience with a banjo uke? How much different is it to play? It's the same thing. It's a ukulele, but it's got a banjo head on it. It sounds awesome. I love it. Howdy from Australia. Yeah. Can you use guitar chord tabs when playing the uke and vice versa? You could, like there's information there that you could extrapolate and bring to whatever instrument. You to guitar, guitar to uke. There is, but you would have to know the music theory. Understand that the ukulele doesn't have two bottom strings and it's as if you're capo in the guitar at the fifth fret. So that's a lot to consider, okay? So I would not suggest doing that unless you have a lot of knowledge about both instruments. I can do it and even then I don't like to do it. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> I'm stuck on a loop because uh, when, I, when I see folks ask questions, basic questions about guitar, and I know that for whatever reason, they're not taking advantage of that free course I, I'm giving them, I'm just scratching my head like, I don't understand. I'm giving you this to, to understand. Like, what are you doing? Get in there, man. What was your greatest insight from Tony Robbins? Greetings from Germany. Love your lessons. Thanks. Guys, 
Uh, I was thinking about today, this uh, December will be three years since I had a life-changing experience um, at a Tony Robbins event. And before then, I've always thought this way, but I had lost my way for many years. I lost my way. And at this event, I realized some things that are gonna sound really crazy to some of you and to others of you. You're absolutely gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. But probably the number one thing that, that I learned was that there is this head and heart relationship. And when we are a child, we think with our hearts. There is literally science that shows that there are neurons, neurons like brain cells in your heart and other places in your body, I believe as well. But there's like lots of neurons in your heart. Uh, there is also an association with the gut. So when you have a gut feeling, people say, oh, I have a gut feeling. Your gut flora is basically a society of micro uh, microorganisms. This isn't. This is just science. So if you're freaked out about it, then be freaked out about science. It's just science. Um, and but one of the things that I learned is that as we get older, we live so much in our head. We're so analytical. We're so fear based. We're so well. It's just this. That's just the way it is. Stiff upper lip and all, you know. And we. That's the way we go forth. And that is what kills us. Um, that is what kills our spirit. It's what kills our lives. It's what takes away so much of our life before our actual death is those mini deaths, right? So I learned that the more that I can live in my heart, and this is a daily exercise, because if I'm sitting there looking on Twitter, getting pissed off that someone's talking political and this, that, and the other thing, right? Um, that's me being in my head. But if I can go, hmm. I'm gonna go meditate right now, or I'm gonna go spend time with my little boy, and I'm gonna teach him how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb on the piano, or I'm gonna go write something, or I'm gonna go create a video, or I'm gonna go do a live video right now, or whatever, then all of a sudden, I'm starting to live from my heart, and it feels so much better than living in my head. That's the number one thing that I learned. I could go on and tell you about 50 other things, but that's the main thing that I learned. Um, and that ultimately, and I've always known this since I was a child, since I was a baby, uh, I've always known that I am unlimited and that there's nothing that I couldn't do if I've set my mind to it and I did the work to get to it. And that's the important part. Setting your mind to it and just saying, I want this, I want this, I want this is not going to do it. It takes grit and getting your hands dirty and doing all the hard work that's going to get you there. But it doesn't stop but you can't do that without first having the thought and without embracing the thought and saying, this is what I want to do. <laughs> Since everything else is there in the section to learn basic meditation in UGS, no. But there's plenty of great videos. In fact, I just posted something, I think, on Twitter the other day of something that I listen to when I meditate and just a short little lesson on how to meditate from a guy who really knows that really well. A uke is basically a guitar, but capoed at the fifth fret. Yes, essentially. Like, the, that's the chords that would come up then, you know, if, if everything was tuned the same. Which they should be. I'm saying that because one of my instruments is slightly out of tune right now. I don't know which one. I didn't have time to tune them both. When I play a song in a particular scale, sometimes I have to use a note which does not belong to that scale. Take an example of E minor scale. What is it called? So, Prakash, uh, some people might call it an accidental, but, you know, you'd have to, but, you know, sharps and flats, some people call it that, but it's not necessarily that. So it's just a note that's outside the scale. Um, some people call it chromaticism, and all of those are kind of correct. But you're just going outside the scale, that's all you're doing. A uh, thumb dose the same, the Travis picking pinch. How can I trick the, the, the old dumb brain? Guy, it's not a dumb brain. It may be old, which old as in wisdom. That's great. Guy, break it down. Whatever it is that you're trying to do. Inside of UGS, when I teach uh, Travis picking, which I have a whole course on Travis picking, I don't start you off, you know, doing, um, you know... That's the end result. 
but I have you do this. That's how I have you starting off. Then I have you go and doing this. Then I might have you go. I might, you know, break, um, add and add and add and add until you get it. Okay. Do I have a video course on ukulele? No, but I do have some ukulele videos on YouTube. Search Your Uke Sage. It's an old channel. I don't upload to it anymore. Um, your Uke, U-K-E. Uh, I, don't, I don't upload to it anymore, but there's enough there that'll get you by, that'll teach you some stuff. And obviously I've got a book for you as well. Uh, free on Kindle Unlimited, and otherwise you can find it in my gear store below. Uh, baritone, uke, same top four strings, a D, G, B, E. Yes, I think you're correct there. Yes, that's correct. So a baritone uke is just the bottom four strings of the guitar, which I'm like, well, what's the use? Like, give me two strings, give me two more strings. So I'm a big fan of the gutulele because essentially it's a, oh, this is not, no, it's not. Now, gutulele is different, but you know, you, you basically have six strings. So, yeah. So like a baritone ukulele, I'm like, what's the use? It's just the guitar minus two strings. That's just my opinion. I'm like, why? Uh, yeah. All right, which song in your opinion sounds the best on acoustic guitar? I mean, there's a million songs. There's not one song that I think sounds best. Have you ever come to India? No, but I would love to. I was watching Sadhguru this morning. If you guys don't know who he is, a uh, super cool Indian dude who's very wise, uh, beautiful heart, and he actually is in Tennessee. He was in India just now when I was watching him. He was doing a live bit this morning where he was meditating and just talking about you know, this, the, the, uh, the world right now and people fearing and everything else. And he was really, uh, had some beautiful insights there, but he's actually, uh, close to Nashville here somewhere. He's got his own little like compound there where you can go and meditate and learn and what have you. I haven't done it yet. I really would like to. I've read that you can tune a gutulele to E tuning, but you need different strings. And why would you anyhow? Uh, have you tried this? What strings? Ordered a GL1 the other day after seeing you play yours. Oh, beautiful, Sid Dad. Um, yeah, I suppose you could do that, but I don't know why you would do that. Why just like keep it the same instrument? That's my opinion. What scale interests me the most? Uh, probably the major scale because the major scale, you get all the modes from it. You get all the pentatonic scales. You get the minor scale, and you compare everything according to it. So if I had one scale and I thought it was, one scale that I thought was awesome would be the major scale. <laughs> Sadhguru has all the answers to all the questions except for guitar. Yeah, and I, and I know a guy who can help him out with that, so. In, in UGS or 365, are there chord change strategies and exercises? Yes, there are. I tell you about how to transition from chord to chord. Now, but once I, here's the deal. Once I teach you how to do that, and I see questions from people all the time, they'll say, well, like in 365, they might, real baby beginners will want me to show each little exercise every single time. There's just no need for that. And in the same way, there's just no need for me to show you chord change strategies and exercises for everything. There's just not a need. Once you understand the concept of chord, tra chord transitions, which I teach in UGS Standard, the one that you get for free today, the link for that's the first link below. Um, once you understand that concept, then changing from one chord to the next is super easy. You can do this, okay? But you don't need a bunch of exercises to do it. You just need to understand the mentality, like what it is that you're looking for, how to do it, you know? Eric, you don't think the baritone ukulele and guitar have different timber? Uh, yeah, they do, BJ. Every, but, but one guitar to the next has a different timber, right? Because it's designed differently and it has different woods and it was made at a different time and the whole nine yards. So, yes, 
But if you're talking about steel, if you put steel strings on a gutulele and you tune it to a guitar, it's just going to sound like a tiny guitar, right? Because it's the same tuning and you're using steel strings. So it, now it is a guitar, but it's still going to sound different, right? So a mandolin and ukulele would not play the same, Babs. No. The mandolin is tuned to perfect fifths, whereas the guitar is tuned to perfect fourths for the most part, okay? So they are not the same. That's why, but fiddles, violins, and mandolins are tuned either the same or real similarly, tuned, they're tuned to fifths. That's why a lot of times in country bands, you'll see the fiddle player pick up a mandolin or the mandolin player pick up a fiddle. Speaking of that, and I forgot to finish my thought, I'm so sorry, I forgot to finish my thought. At 1 p.m. today, I'm going to be interviewing Alex Klein, uh, known as Alex Plays Dobro on Instagram and other social places. And she is a full-on producer here in Nashville. She's a producer. She's a multi-instrumentalist. She's a songwriter. She is a beast at everything she does. And I want you guys to check her out today because we've had lots of questions from folks about like, how do you make it in the industry? I'm going to ask her that, what that, what that means uh, to her and, uh, and some other questions for you. But just understand that uh, we're going to have this interview today. We've never done this before and I think you're going to dig it. So, and she's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, my wife actually writes with her uh, good friends and she will be on Instagram with me at 1 p.m. today. We're gonna do a live interview, okay? Awesome. Um, and Emmy, thank you so much for posting my Instagram handle there. Yes, 1 p.m. today, yes, indeed. Uh, Emmy is saying, I've been playing guitar for a few years now. My level's between a beginner and intermediate. Where do you recommend I start in your courses? I don't care if you've been playing for 50 years, which would be longer than me, Start on video one. I cannot tell you how many times I've had somebody who has been playing lo a long time, some, some of them longer than me, they come into the program and they say, wow, was never taught that. My guitar teacher never taught me that. This would have made life so much easier, dear Lord. Ooh, almost stepped in ukulele there. Um, so, so start at the first video, okay? The link for that is below, yourguitarstage.com slash UGS and go if you're not in UGS and you want to be part of the movement today, then you can do that for free, okay? On a side note, bought the Epiphone Masterbuilt. Yeah, thanks to your suggestion. It is awesome. Bruce, isn't it? I love the Masterbuilt series. Epiphone Masterbuilt, anybody looking for an affordable acoustic guitar, that plays like a very, very expensive guitar, check out the Master Built series. Uh, M-A-S-T-E-R-B-I-L-T. That's in my kit store, kit.com slash your guitar stage, or the link for that you can find below. Just look for something that says gear and you'll find it, okay? Rather than love, rather than money, rather than fame, give me truth. Indeed, thrash metal, I'm with you. <clears throat> Hello, uh, learning guitar and baritone uke and looking to get a concert uke. Do you think learning all three at the same time would be a hindrance? No, not at all. In fact, they're going to bring things together for you. So no, it won't be a hindrance at all. With which scale should I start playing the electric? Uh, pentatonic is a good one to start. Uh, how to incorporate while playing lead on acoustic guitar. How to incorporate chords while playing lead on... Well, you can only do one at a time. So you play your chord, you know.
what I would do is I'd say hit a chord. Hit a chord on the one. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. And just on the ones, hit the chord. And so then what you want to do is you want to practice. Uh, very helpful if you have like a drum machine or something counting at first until you get the vibe of this. But essentially, because you're going to have to kind of count or feel a measure. So like, two, three, four. You could also scat like that. That sort of thing, okay? So hit the chord on the one, throw in a few little melodies there. That's the way to get started, you know? Then you can keep the feel and rhythm. Okay, if I play the guitar capo on the fourth fret, would it be tuned with the ukulele lady first note? No, fifth fret. And then that would be the open strings. If both the instruments are in tune. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Clint. Uh, hello, good sir. I hope you are well in all this madness. Good to see you are still at it. Back to your roots. Exactly. Filming at home. And in fact, let's see. There's been four studios, I think. So in my original house and then in this room, this like literally across where we're at the piano right now, that was the second one. And then downstairs in the basement was number three. And now number four where we're at. Uh, and then now number five. Like, right? <laughs> Full circle. When will the pump organ make a comeback? Henry, I wish the pump organ would make a comeback today because I love that instrument. A buddy of mine played that in church one time and I was like, what is that? You're sitting there. It's really cool, man. You have like this thing. You pump with your feet, right? Like a cat would need, and you're filling a, a bellow filled with air, and then you're playing. And so it's kind of like an accordion. It's wicked cool. I love it. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Eric, what are your thoughts on a snake pick? I don't know what that is. I don't know what a snake pick is. Eric, I've been practicing country, blues, thumb, and index picking, but when picking single notes with index, thumb stops with a lot of practice. I don't know uh, if there's a question there. Um, okay, good. Does my daughter play guitar? She does. She plays guitar, she plays uke, she, progr she programs, and she plays keys. I'm having a huge problem advancing to uh, Raschiato triple strumming, right? Which I'm not very good at, but I can, I can kind of fake it a little bit. Um, what should I do? Practice it more. Honestly, that's it. Slow it way down. Slow it down. You're trying to practice it too fast. I know this because that's everybody's problem when they say, I'm having a problem with this, how do I fix it? You've got to slow it down and you've got to get accurate at it because what's happening is you're trying to just do it and you haven't earned it yet. Sorry to be the guy to say that, but you haven't earned it yet, so you've got to earn it. And that means playing it over and over and over again, play it slowly and surely, okay? Sir, in a long run, how do we stay motivated? Because so, so many times we don't know where we are heading while practicing. Candy, find other songs and find other instrumentalists who might inspire you. You need to have a reason. You know, here I go again, but everything comes down to your why. Why is it that you want it? Why am I doing this broadcast right now? I'm not getting paid to do this broadcast. Why? I do it because I feel like I have something to share with the world. And I also am moved by your comments. So, you know, there's some degree of that where I'm, where I'm moved by your comments and I like to see and the interaction and everything that I'm, de that I'm talking with 400 folks. There's four, I'm meeting with 400 friends right now. Like, that's cool. That's my why to do this. 
and to continue to help people uh, play guitar, uh, get people into the course, the whole nine yards. So there's lots of reasons why. So Candy, what's your reason why? If you don't have much of a reason why, then your progress will surely suffer. So there needs to be a big reason why. Another thing I learned from Tony Robbins is to find out what your why is. Sometimes that requires uh, a lot of digging in the dirt. Let's say, for instance, you smoke and you're like, well, you know, I really like smoking and I know I should stop, but, you know, I want to stop. And that's where the line of thinking stops. And someone might wonder, well, why can't I quit smoking? Well, they haven't made the why big enough. This is what Tony Robbins would do is he would say, you like smoking, do you? Yeah. Um, he, he would use any technique to show you what's actually going on. If he had a picture of your lungs or whatever, he'd show you your, your lungs. And uh, if, if he couldn't do that, he would say, well, do you love your daughter? And he would, he'd, he'd drill down to all the things that you love. Um, how do you think, uh, you know, getting lung cancer would feel to your, your, your family who loves you, what have you? And he's going to make you hurt. He's going to make it hurt really bad so that you freaking stop. That's creating a why. Sometimes you've got to dig in the dirt to find out what your why is. Uh, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, but that's good because that uncomfortable, that being uncomfortable is going to get you to the place where you want to go. And unless we just want to remain level and boring our whole lives, You've got to have some pain. You gotta have challenges. You gotta have struggles, just like today. Beautiful things are going to happen because of this. Whereas if it didn't happen, beautiful things wouldn't happen. Because of what's going on right now, beautiful things are going to happen that wouldn't have happened had this thing not come around. That's just truth, okay? Uh, people die every day from all sorts of things, but this truly is going to change us in ways, in beautiful ways. It already is. I'm seeing it at least in the people that I'm watching. And if you're not seeing that, then you're watching the wrong people. What kind of lights am I using? Um, I don't know the names of them. We'll put them in the gear store at some point, but uh, they're little LED lights that we use for, it's our accent lights actually that we use in the background in the big studio. Uh, sir, please tell me how to play bar chords. Uh, I would, it's guitar time, I would tell you how to play bar chords, but there's more to it and I have a two-part video series on YouTube. I want you to watch those, but I don't want you to watch those until you go through the first 30 lessons inside of UGS that are for free today. The link for that's below. After you do that, watch, go to YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Bar Chords, and I have a two-part series where I will not only show you the secrets to playing the bar chords, because there really are things that you gotta know. Not only will I show you that, but I'll show you how to create hundreds of chords just from knowing one chord form, okay? Yes, beautiful things uh, already are happening even as you speak. I know, I don't understand, I'm probably on a real touchy subject here, but I don't understand why certain countries, why certain nationalities get this more than others. And my Indian friends seem to get this a lot. They, they get it, I feel like that country was was built in, in being in the very now. They, they've had lots of struggles, and I think for whatever reason, my Indian friends tend to get this stuff more than some of my other non-Indian friends. I know someone literally just got triggered for me saying that, so, see ya. Um, okay, how many guitars do I have? I've got a lot of them. Uh, maybe, I'm gonna say, 40 guitars probably between me and my wife. She probably has about seven, I'd say. Jeff uh, is in the 365 program, 365 guitar plan. Yesterday's 365 plan was hammer-ons and pull-offs. I'm getting better, but could you please show a close-up of a demo of a 324 and comment on the correct technique? Jeff, yeah, Jeff, so right, so right before that video, I actually show you how to do hammer-ons and pull-offs, but let me show you again, because the technique is no different, whether you're doing a one to a four, or a one to a three, or a two to a three, or a two to a four, or whatever, or if you're doing pull-offs, the technique's no different. It doesn't matter where you're at on the neck, doesn't matter what fingers you're using, doesn't matter what string you're using. It's the same every single time. So here you go, when, you're, when you go from one, a lower note to a higher note, it's a hammer-on. When you're going from a higher note to a lower note, it's a pull-off. So a hammer-on looks like this. If I'm gonna hammer from one to three, 
I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna hammer three. Now, you're gonna say, but Eric, mine isn't that loud. Well, of course it's not, because you haven't practiced as much as I have, or maybe you have, and if so, it's gonna sound better than mine. And that's the only difference, is that practice creates better technique. Okay? And a pull-off is the opposite. So you pick a note, and then it's as if you're picking it like this, but you're doing it with the picking hand, or the fretting hand. So what I'm literally pulling that string down to get that sound. If I just lifted my finger off, that's not gonna do much. That's me lifting my finger straight up. But if I pull it down, look what I'm doing. I'm yanking that string down, snapping it. Make sense? Okay, good. How do I make my scales sound less like scales? By using improvisation. Taking a small part of the scale and getting associated with how that scale should sound according to the chord progression that you're using. I have a video on YouTube and it says you're playing your scales wrong. Watch that video. Also watch the video that's also on YouTube. If you're not in UGS, I'm giving you some free stuff here. If you're not in UGS, then on YouTube search your Guitar Sage Minimalistic, and I'll show you this minimalistic mindset of playing guitar, which will help you to understand improvisation across any chord progression, across any scale, um, across any part of the neck. It's a mentality, it's an understanding of this. Once you get that, then you're able to do it. In the same way that I don't script everything that I was gonna say today here, any of it really for that matter, I was hoping to get a song out for you at the top of the program, that didn't happen because um, I thought my camera failed, which it still has a big exclamation point as if I'm not live. Am I live? Yeah. Um, so, um, I forgot where I was going with that. Sorry. Where was I going? Um, I don't know. Shoot. I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. I had a big breakfast. All right. Would you recommend a good first pedal? I was considering a looper. Yeah, I'd say if you're gonna get a first pedal, get a looper pedal because they're great. You can record yourself, you can play chord progressions till your heart's content and then noodle over the top of them. Then the next one I would say would be some sort of like overdrive pedal because those are good too. But definitely a looper pedal would be my first. Uh, thank you, Gary. Thank, uh, you're a beacon of kindness in this crazy world. Looking forward to your animal shelter video. Yes, we're going to do that. We still, we literally have $1,600 that you guys gave us. It's still sitting in my Google account. Haven't done anything with it uh, because we were going to go to the shelter like shortly after there where we had the tornadoes and then stuff started getting squirrely. And like a few days later, I told my crew, go home. I saw this thing coming ahead of time and folks were looking at me sideways like I was crazy. And I'm like, I think that, things are gonna shut down a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that ahead of time. And um, so the money's still sitting there, but we're definitely gonna do something indeed, Gary. Thank you so much. Yes, 100%. Uh, yeah, okay. Which looper pedal would you recommend? A ditto pedal is great, D-I-T-T-O. It's a great first pedal. Would I recommend a chorus pedal? Eh, I don't use one very often. When I'm playing some 80s stuff, I do. Can the banjo fit into this, what we're talking about? No, it's, it's, it is tuned differently. It's a different vibe. But honestly, I learned the basic open chords for a, on a banjo in like an hour and was playing pretty proficiently. With the banjo, it's all about the picking hand. There's a lot of crazy technique when it comes to that. Yeah. Not even crazy technique. It's pretty simple, but it kind of messes with your brain a little bit because it's a different vibe than finger picking on the guitar. Similar, but um, but different. Uh, on UGS, you recommend some acoustics that seem American. Is that because it's what you're familiar with or other reasons? I've been recommended some like Yamaha, Love Yamaha, and Cordoba, etc. Thoughts? Uh, I love Yamaha guitars. I've never had a Yamaha guitar that I didn't love. Cordoba, 
uh, even though it sounds Spanish, I would say that that's probably made in America, and my guess would be, well, I don't know, it's probably, everything's made in China, so it's like the companies here in the U.S., but then they're made in China and stuff, so, um, so no, there's no specific reason. Uh, Fenders and Gibsons, I just have lots of those, but no, I don't care where the, where the guitar's made, doesn't matter to me. Just make it good. Same way with music. I don't care what the music is, as long as it's good. It could be hip hop, it could be jazz, it could be rock, metal, country. I don't care what it is. Just make good music. I don't care. Uh, too many people in certain countries feel entitled. Sound familiar? Yeah, for sure, man. I think that some countries, it's just like built into them. Um, where, you know, depending on where they're at in the curve of, of certain things, yeah, I think that as a whole, it's, it just gets dangerous when we, when we uh, stereotype. I mean, there, there are stereotypes and stere some stereotypes are true, right? But, um, but it can be a little bit dangerous if you say that person's, those people are like that. But as a whole, you might be able to say that about certain countries, I would say. But I dare not. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, look at this. Pipes McGee, which I love that name, by the way. Hey, Eric, you've sparked me to shoot for three one-hour practice sessions per day. First hour down. Friends, right now is the time. If you are at home like yeah, probably should be. I mean, go outside. That's something else I want to say. I watched the video yesterday. Uh, Ralph Smart is a guy that I watch a lot on YouTube. He's way out there, so he, he, he probably, for most people watching, you probably won't get it or you'll think he's crazy or whatever, but I love his videos. And uh, one thing he always says or that he's been saying lately is get out. Get out in the sun. Get some vitamin D. Um, get in that fresh air. We're going to be doing it in a minute because the sun is supposed to be coming out here shortly. So after my interview with Alex at 1 p.m., we're going to be getting outside in the sun for sure, keeping our distance from people, but we're going to be getting out in the sun. But guess what? When you're not out in the sun, so when it's cloudy or whatever, or you've had too much sun, get with that guitar. It's like this is the perfect opportunity for you to dig in and get to know your instrument, Okay. Atomic Punk, love the name. Thanks for helping out newbies like me. Can you please give me advice on getting my bends in tune? Thanks so much. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday, Atomic Punk. What you want to do is you want to hit a target note. In this case, here's the 10th fret of the second string. Then I'm going to bend up to that note. Make sense? What we do with half steps? So my ear is attenuated, or I say attenuated. I'm not using that word anymore because I'm using it wrong. And one of my UGS students pointed that out. That's not the word. Uh, your, your mind is, uh, I should say, you have a target note. You have something to tune to or something to target to. That's your note. And then you've got to set in your ear and then you can bend up to it, okay? <clears throat> Good. Advice on retaining steaming pace while singing. Advice on retaining steaming pace while singing. Elvis, I'm gonna have you look at that again. Number one, I love your music, and number two, I'm gonna have you read that again and you tell me if I should understand that, because I don't know what that means, any of that. Um, <clears throat> but I'd love to answer it. How to play reggae bit. So, Lucina, when you're playing reggae, usually, nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, 100 times out of 100, you're, you are, oh, strumming pace, okay. <laughs> Steaming equals strumming, okay. I'll get to that in a minute. You're emphasizing the upbeat, so you could take any tune. Okay, 
da 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 It's kind of a reggae sound because I'm just emphasizing the upbeat down. Up, up, up. And our beat is down, up, right? So it's like down, up, 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 down, up. Spell check victim. Uh, yes. Okay, so let's go back. What did it say? It said something about... Oh, shoot. Why can't I find it? Okay, so how to keep your, your pace going, basically, is what it said. Something like that, right? How to keep your pace going when you are strumming. So what you want to do is, if you could be working with a metronome, that would be really great. But... If your strumming is fine, if it sounds great and you're just not keeping pace, then it would be helpful if you were working with something that was helping you stay in pace, like a metronome or another song. If you don't have that, then what is your, like what's your motivate, what's keeping you in the groove, right? Unless you're singing and you can feel it slow down, then speed it up and build that internal clock. Can you also play bass? Yes, and you can too. I'll show you in a few days here, for sure. Strumming pace while singing. Yeah, keep that foot going. Tap, keep the foot going, keep the foot going. That will also keep you in pace, okay? The more you can move your body, when you see musicians moving their body and what have you, it's harder to slow the beat down or to speed the beat up if you're keeping your body moving because you get used to feeling a certain sway. The more that you can get your anatomy moving when you're playing an instrument, the better it's gonna be, the better in time you're gonna be. What does that mean reggae uses inverted chords? Does that mean reggae uses inverted chords? No, it just means that you're emphasizing the upbeat. It's called a syncopation. How do I slide into one scale box to the next? Terry, find and commit to a slide, that's it. So like for instance, if you're going from form one to form two, there's this nice little, right? You know this? So we got this. So find one place that you're gonna slide to and then commit to the new scale. That's all you gotta do. And then practice that a bit. Practice that until it feels natural to you. Ooh, that's baby cakes. Uh, okay, which style of acoustic guitar playing is the basic original style? Uh, you know, I would say maybe folk guitar. It's, it's just, you know, country, folk guitar. Uh, do you save this live stream on YouTube for us to watch later? I do. Do you ever play PRS guitars? I have. Yeah, they're really cool. Ovation guitar okay for beginners? Yes. And uh, Motion Gory, um, hello, hi, seven times. Hello, how are you doing? When I tap, I lose timing. When you, you, okay, so that just means you need to do it more. That's a practiced thing. That's all it is, it's just practice. You gotta learn to tap. Helpful if you can do it with a song. You know, a song that you know and love already. Get to tapping, get to counting. One, two, three, four. Count subdivisions. One and two and three and four. And the more subdivisions, the better, the more you'll stay in time. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a count. Count all the time. This is, these are things that you can do while you're driving. I say all the time, you can be practicing music 24 uh, seven. If you're driving, you're driving out, you know, to go to work. Not that you're doing that right now, but if you were, if you were driving to the market to go get some food or whatever, you're gonna be tapping, you're gonna be listening to music, you're counting, you can count out loud. That will help you with your timing, okay? Because you are uh, communing with music in a way that's interactive, in a way that requires your brain is you're not passively, you're actively doing music, okay? Do I prefer electric or acoustic? It depends on what I'm doing, I like both. I'm new to the channel and thinking about starting to play acoustic guitar. Do you have a tip or something? 
Uh, yeah, or something. The link is below, Mikkel. If you're serious about that, and it's not just a comment so people say hello to you, the link is below for an entire program for you to get in there and absolutely dominate the instrument, literally with like 30-something videos. They're my most used videos ever. It's the very first link. So yeah, a tip or something, and 1,300 videos for you here. So whatever you need, Mikkel, I've got it for you, I'm sure of te teaching a bunch of songs and everything else too. So that would be my tip to you. Otherwise, I have like a million tips that I could share with you. Which one do I share with you, you know? MSG Knight, I mentioned, thank you so much for the donation, M MSG Knight. I mentioned the other day, my 16 year old baby had her bridge peeled off. Luthier called back and said he could secure it to a metal plate he is mounting in. Yay, good, bring it to a Luthier for sure. They know what they're doing. Do you recommend Guild Guitars? I'm thinking about uh, buying an acoustic. I've owned them before, they're, they're fine. Uh, just like any brand name guitar, you can find a lemon, you can find good ones. Just depends on the guitar. Brand names don't mean much if the guitar doesn't play well. How do you think this will affect the sound? MSG Knight, with that plate underneath it, you'll probably get a little bit more resonance, but it will probably affect the sound a little bit. Okay. I only know the notes on the fretboard on strings six and five. What's the best way to learn the other notes on the other strings? Beautiful acoustic guitar, Eric. Thank you so much, Crystal. Crystal, that video, how to memorize the notes on your fretboard, and it's literally, I think it's like a five minute video. When you get done with this in five minutes, you will know every single note on the fretboard, be able to find them like that. That video is free in the free, the, the beginner section. UGS standard below, yourguitarsage.com slash UGS, okay? Or you could go to yourguitarsage.com slash 30. All right, and I'll show you how to do it. It's super easy, it's not difficult. You need to know that musical alphabet, A through G, you need to know B and E don't have a sharp, and you need to know the names of the open strings and how to, how to add that together. Those are literally the three things you, you need, and you can do it like that, anybody can, super easy. Should I practice more on playing chords or playing just with fingers? Well, you need fingers to play the chords, so you're gonna be doing both. Play it, yeah, play it before you buy it, yeah. Do you have anything on how to set up a looper pedal? Uh, I mean, a looper pedal, you plug your guitar in and then you plug it to the speaker. There's no setup, you know, you probably need some power for it, so it's literally in and out, but I have a whole course on looper pedals inside of UGS. I do have some looper pedals on, uh, some looper videos on YouTube. Search Your Guitar Sage Loop, okay? And in fact, I sat down with Robbie Calvo, who is a master at this, and he shows us some, some great insights. So that may be more what you're talking about, like how to use the looper, watch that. Medium or light gauge strings for acoustic? Uh, I like mediums better, but that's personal preference. I can do finger style, but if I incorporate chords, um, oh, someone just donated $20. Lord Excess, thank you, Lord Excess. You're always coming in strong. Thank you, my friend. A huge thank you to Eric, the UGS team, and all the UGS members who help each other in the system. Come join us. A huge thank you to the broadcast crew. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Emily and Mike and Jason, thank you so much for, for being on and helping out. And uh, we're still working, even though we're working from home, we are still working and creating more content. I think we're gonna drop another video on Friday. What is today? Is today Wednesday? Today's Wednesday, so two days from now we're gonna drop another video. We had a few in the bank there, and um, yeah, so we're still working. Indeed, just from home. Okay, I can do finger style, but if I incorporate chords and changes, finger style hands starts glitching, pause. Am I doing something wrong or more practice? You're not doing anything wrong, it's more practice. If you are juggling, listen up folks, this is for everybody, anybody with a head. If you have a head, you should be listening. If you juggle with three balls and you're doing great, would it be strange if I threw a fourth and fifth and sixth ball in there that you would start dropping balls? Of course not, because your brain can only handle so much in regards to how much practice you've done. So people do juggle with six balls, they do this, but not without a lot of practice. So yes, of course, now that you're changing chords while you're finger picking, there's a lot going on. You need to slow it down, break it down, like I teach you inside of UGS. I think I have a video for that on YouTube, slow it down, break it down. Uh, also inventory breakdown method, I think I might have a video for that on YouTube as well. 
You gotta break things down then. Should I practice scales or chords? I think chords or, are boring. Well, chords make up a lot of songs, so I would practice both, but get some songs, because you're just kind of doing this. If you're just doing this, there's nothing wrong with this, practicing your scales, right? But no one's gonna come see you in concert. No one wants to see this. That's just for you. But they do want to see you playing songs. Right? That's, that's where chords can come in very handy. My guitar strings are making a buzzing sound. What should I do about it? Take it to a luthier. When this is all done, take it to a luthier because it could be several things, many different things that it could be with your guitar. So to try to analyze that from over the internet is not recommended. It could be so many different things. Okay. Okay, medium gauge strings for acoustic, for acoustic blues. Sure, that'll work. I bought a looper pedal because of Robbie Calvo, because of the Robbie Calvo video. Great, it's awesome, good, love it. Yes, he's great. Okay, yeah, sure. Do you recommend a first semi-hollow electric? No, it could be whatever makes you happy. When I answer a question like that, I'm not being snarky, it's just true and if I want to get to other questions, I just need to move on. So it's like, no, I don't have a recommendation. For, for first, anything that with strings on it's going to do. I, my first guitar had one string on it, and it was a piece of crap. Okay, and I've made a whole career on playing guitar. So you don't need anything too special. See you later, Miles. See you, buddy. Could you explain polyrhythms and hidden rhythms? BJ's saying. Never heard of a hidden rhythm. Polyrhythms uh, would, would be like a rhythm over another rhythm. That's one way to look at it. Oh, I just saw a hawk. Ooh, that's cool. Um, so polyrhythms would be, yeah, like a rhythm over another rhythm, or you might, you might have like a mixed time signature, or you might do threes over, over twos. So if you have one, two, three, four, you go one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Hidden rhythms, never heard of it. I haven't tried String Joy strings. Have you? I want to. They're made right in town here. I know they're not shipping right now, but I have, uh, I've never tried them. I'd like to. When the song goes to the four chord, do you focus on the scale notes of the key the song is in or notes of the fours chord scale? Great question, Jeff. Unless you love jazz, I would not emphasize all the notes from that scale. I just wouldn't, personally. What I would do is I would stick to the scale or the key that you're in, and when the four chord comes up, to, to tip your hat to a few notes in that chord would be a good thing. To identify, hey, that chord is there and here's a few notes out of it, that's a good thing to do. That will make uh, it sound more intelligent, like we're having a conversation as opposed to just someone uh, going off talking by themselves. Make sense? The second chord that I played in Don't Worry Be Happy was a D minor. So a C, D minor, F. If you're not used to playing uh, an F chord, you can do it in key of G. That's, a key. That's G. So we got a G, A minor, C to that. Back to the G. Cool? 
cool. Down and I get my fill. Can't get up this great big hill in a day. But it's the same chords, right? This is the most hated song at our studio, by the way. I've done this song live and <laughs> four non-blondes, right? But it's the same chords, yeah. How about that? Interesting. It came out about the same time, too. How to play any song without knowing chords just by ear, should I only practice or there's but how to play any song without knowing chords just by ear, should I only practice or is there any special technique? Paul, go see a wizard. Or sell your soul to the devil. Or uh, there's other techniques that people talk about, but that's like saying, how do I make money without working? So what do you mean? How do I play a song without knowing chords? Just by ear. Any song. You want to know any song. Let's, let's beat up Paul for a minute. I'm joking, Paul. You want to, let me, I'm just repeating the question to you. How to play any song without knowing chords just by ear. Should I only practice? Yes. A lot. Or is there any special technique? I'm messing with you, Paul. Don't try to take the easy way out because you are going to continue to suck by doing things, by trying to do things easy. There is nothing good that's ever been created in this world by taking a shortcut. Nothing ever good. Nothing. Zero. Don't try to be the first guy to do that. So get in the program, go through the course, do the, do the work, and you can do anything that you want on the instrument, but not without the work. And why, why, what are you afraid of chords? Why are you, I don't understand the, why are you afraid of chords? Besides the pentatonic, which scales do you recommend? Pentatonic and the major scale, but unless you know why that is, which I talk about in the course, the free course I give you, it's not gonna mean anything to you. But major and the pentatonic, okay? Uh, Jeff, no, the song is a, a major one, minor two, and a major four. That's what we're doing. It sounds like a one, yes. So one, minor two, four. That's what uh, Be Happy is about, okay? Don't worry, be happy. Three Mud People, you're so welcome. Um, thanks, Eric, for, for your family, for sharing your days with us. You're so welcome. I'm doing it as much for me as I am for you guys. I love being here with you guys. I feel like I'm connecting, and I actually want to do it more, but in the rest of the time, I'm spending time with my family, which is pretty cool, too. Uh, so, Any chance you could go over and make a video on possible pathway for guitarists give a summary of your path? Huh. You know, I've talked about it so much, Harris. I don't know that I don't know if that would be a boring video for folks, but um, I have a, a video that I talk about where I talk about something similar, and I say, like, this is what I would have done, and I forgot the name of that video. I'm sorry, but you know, give a summary of your path. I'll think about that. That's a great. That's a great idea. What is your biggest tip for struggling to fret the bass string on a bar chord? James, watch the video effing F chord, E-F-F-I-N-G, F chord, for more detail. Otherwise, what you wanna do is get drop that thumb, get it lower on the back of the neck, right? So if it's back here, as opposed to up here, then you're gonna be better off. You're gonna have more stability and more strength Okay, make sure that your thumb's behind that first finger so that you've got a nice pinching action like this instead of pinching like this. That's gonna make a big difference. In, in building strength, you could use a capo at first to press the strings down a little bit and then try it. That will give you some motivation because you're gonna see that I'm correct, that yes, you can do this. Eric's not a big fat liar, that yes, you can do anything that you wanna do on the instrument, but Sometimes you need a little cheat, a little something that's going to make you go, okay, I get it. I can do that. So once I get strong enough, I won't have to use the capo. Okay, but watch the effing F chord because that is really going to help you a ton. Okay. 
Okay, so someone's asking, Eric, I'd love to hear more about your journey if you do it. I can tell it to you. I'll tell you in a, in a really quick nutshell what it is because I don't think, it, I mean, it's probably boring. Uh, so I'll just give it to you in a short, a short bit here. When I was four, uh, when I was a kid, played lots of music or didn't play lots of music. Listened to lots of music. There was lots of opera, lots of classical, lots of rock and roll being played in my house. Uh, my father grew up in Berlin during the war, Hitler, all that nonsense, and uh, moved over here. Uh, so he was always playing classical music. He was in the Berlin Boys Choir, uh, pretty cool. And so music was a big part of my house, at least playing-wise. No one was playing any instruments. Everybody was singing a little bit. Uh, so I was very affected by music. Loved music. Loved classical music. Loved minor-sounding music. Loved all sorts of music. Spaghetti Western, still one of my favorite. Was listening to that as a kid. So I was moved by music, the language of music. So it'd be like listening to Spanish and wanting to speak that way but didn't know how and then finally took a course in it. Um, so... When I was about 10 years old, a buddy of mine had an electric guitar. I had a Trans Am model that was about this big. I remember it was like 30 something bucks and I remember being obsessed with it and having to have it. Ken, thank you so much for the donation. Thanks so much for being here. Your positivity inspires me. Kudos to you and your staff. Thank you, Ken. Super kind for that donation, buddy. Really, really appreciate it. So I had this model. I was building it. My buddy was obsessed with it. I wanted his electric guitar. We traded. So I got my first electric guitar for like 30 something dollars. It was a piece of crap. Brought it home. I remember riding on the bicycle. My buddy had me on his handlebars and I had this guitar in my hand and he said to me, man, if you fell off this and that guitar hit the ground, it would just be circuit boards everywhere. Because in our minds, an electric guitar underneath the wood was circuit boards. You know, it was a high, high, a lofty computer inside that thing. Um, so I brought it home. Didn't really practice it because um, I didn't, I just didn't. I uh, didn't have any, um, I didn't have anything to learn from. I did, but I just didn't do it, you know? Didn't pick up the guitar for many years later. And when I was 14, I, had a, I found a one string guitar. I mean, it was a six string guitar, but it had one string on it. Learned to play some melodies with it. A friend's, my mom's boyfriend at the time, uh, my folks were separated, and my mom's boyfriend at the time, a real sweet guy, saw me doing, you know, playing on this one string, bought a, a cheap classical guitar, student model, loved it, fell in love with it, started playing all this Def Leppard because that's what was playing at the time and I was totally into that, Friday night music videos, MTV, etc., etc. Bought a tablature book, started learning all these songs, started learning stuff by ear, was just obsessed with it. And then in high school, a uh, year or so later, my dad bought me an electric guitar, a $250 PV Razor, along with a, a $20 or a you know $50 PV Audition 20 amp and was off to the races. Two years later, um, joined my first band, was in the studio, was around 16, uh, started uh, playing lead guitar, recording, writing, uh, playing live, hundreds of shows when I was a kid, and joining other bands, what have you. Uh, small town in Florida, friend said, hey, you need to go move to Nashville. You're a big fish in a small pond. They were right. I moved to Nashville. I was a small fish in a giant pond. Amazing players here. And uh, and continued to teach. By the way, I taught back home and uh, my friends and just whoever wanted to, to learn. And uh, went to Nashville, came to Nashville, went to school. Uh, sorry, three years as a music major back home. Moved to Nashville as a business major, music business major. Taught, was in bands, recorded, had a, uh, a recording contract, um, was in lots of bands, and um, I'm fast-forwarding, this super fast version of it. But nonetheless, uh, I'm here now, and I'm teaching. <laughs> I cut out a lot of that story. And I just saw another donation come through. Uh, Steve, thank you so much, my friend. Super kind of you. So appreciate that. Thank you, bud. Okay, um, when playing in fingerstyle with arrangements, I think it sounds more professional than just simple chords. I was asking more about the arrangements. Uh, gotcha, Paul, okay. No, I'm not, and I'm not picking on you, buddy. You know, I, I do that every now and then. When playing in fingerstyle with arrangements, I think it sounds more professional than just simple chords. I see what you're saying, than just strumming. Okay, perfect, okay, Paul. Yes, 
and learn some finger style. I've got videos for you on YouTube about that, lots of videos. And obviously inside of UGS, inside the free system today, you've got all that available to you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, we've got a challenge here. Guy, Guy Bross is saying, Eric, with all respect, when I had a garage band in the 60s, my grandmother, who never had a lesson or knew the names of the chords, would listen to a song and play by ear. If not talent, don't know what. So, Guy, here, let me tell you exactly what it is. It's very easy to play an instrument and never know the names of the chords. It's so easy to do this. You can understand the mechanics of something without understanding the names of it. The names are just names anyhow, right? They're just names. I'm not really sitting in front of you. This is just an image that's going over the internet, but it's enough to get you by to where you can know what I'm saying. You can see my hands move and everything, but I'm not really standing in front of you. I'm not sitting in front of you. And in the same way, you could learn an instrument and not know the names or what have you and just be able to play chords, be able to play melodies and, and have a good ear, to develop an ear. But here's the deal. Your grandmother didn't on day one do this. She practiced in some way or another. She figured this out. She might have been very quick at it, but there was a day or several days, many days, where she sat down and did it. So I get what you're saying, Guy. There's this, this feeling that some people just get it. But just like a lot of things that are going on right now, much of it is an illusion. Much of it is created. Um, much of it's created in our heads of, of why it is that your grandmother was able to just do this right away. And that's where folklore and stuff like that comes from. There's either, there's folklore, there's truth, right? And so, um, and the way I look at it, there's just truth or there's, there's nothing. There's just, there's truth and then there's lies. Just like a lot of stuff that's going on right now. There's truth and there's lies. And, and, but we're confused about which one to believe, right? So, don't freak out. Uh, donation from Phil. Thank you, buddy. Wow, you guys have been bringing the donations this week, and I so appreciate that. Super kind, my friends. Uh, uh, look at this. There's a reason we give streets names so we don't get lost. That's all it is. Uh, you know, exactly. Like, 50 years ago, this street didn't have a name. 30 years ago, this street didn't have a name because it wasn't here, because it was the woods but you gotta throw a name on it, right? So your grandma could have been walking around here. She didn't have to, to get here and you know say, oh, this is Maplehurst. She didn't have to walk down the street. She could have just been walking in nature and you'd say, well, how did she know to do that? Well, she was just walking in the woods, right? That's how you learn an instrument. You don't need the names. Does that make sense? It's, it's a, but, I, but I love the question. It's great, okay? I love that you guys are thinking. I love that you're challenging me and that you're questioning this stuff. Uh, if you're a prodigy who can just pick up a guitar and play anything without much practice or lessons, you wouldn't need to watch this. Uh, right, and when we say prodigy, when people say prodigy, my belief is this, because I've never met a prodigy who didn't practice their ass off on their, on their instrument. Never met it. So let's just say, so, so but the word prodigy in people's minds, they think, okay, well, this is somebody who didn't have to work as hard, someone who just gets it, they didn't have to practice, they just got it. I've never met that in my life, and I've met a bazillion musicians, I've taught thousands of lessons, and I've never seen it. So if I'm not gonna see it, who, who's gonna see it? Like, I, I don't understand. So what we do, though, is we see somebody who's doing really well, and we assume a bunch of stuff, and that's when we start saying, words words like prodigy, which are uh, labels that bend our mentality in probably not ways that are good because they make us just go, oh, he's a prodigy. You know, oh, Hendrix, he was a prodigy. No, he wasn't. He worked his ass off. How insulting to call him a prodigy when he worked his ass off. What are you great at that if I said, well, lucky you. Look at you, Mr. Lawyer Man. Look at you doing so good. Wow, you just were born with that, didn't you? Yeah, you were just born with being a great lawyer or a great accountant or a great chemist or whatever. Look at you, Mr. Prodigy. You didn't have to work hard for that, did you? That just came to you. No, I got my doctorate. I worked my ass off. 
I was top in my class. I stayed home and I worked while everybody else was partying. That's your prodigy. <laughs> I'm seeing people drop off like flies. They can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> uh, right. We might, when might we hear from my wife, songwriting tips, fighting urge to ask how much for the women? I will have her on for sure. I will have her on for sure. Uh, we've talked about it. We're not sure what we're going to do with my, my little boy during that time. It, may, it might be that she's working in here and he's playing in the other room and then we get up and, and she might have to get up and go and do that. So if you guys are cool with more impromptu bits here, look at, look at how, how many people dropped off. Seriously, they can't handle the truth. You guys can handle the truth. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, so if, as long as you guys are cool with her coming in and out, then we'll, then we'll do that. Uh, but we might do it during nap time, so that would be a later during the day thing, like around 3 p.m. Central Standard Time-ish. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> we'll pay for the sitter with donations. I know, but the thing is, we're not letting any sitters come to the house right now. We're not letting anybody come to the house. My neighbor came to the house the other day. Uh, new neighbor, obviously not taking things seriously. So I was just, it was just like, she had some mail. And I said, from our neighbor that just moved, I said, just leave it right there. It's <laughs> like a pile of mail on our front porch. <laughs> Whatever, just being safe, just in case, right? Tips for understanding extensions better. Okay, so let's talk about it. This is uh, a little bit heady, but I'm going to try to keep it very simple because this is a, a, a thick subject, okay? The truth shall set you free, Rob, indeed. When we're talking about harmonizing, we're talking about skipping notes within the scale. So, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. We're we're skipping notes. When we're building chords, that's usually what we do. So, when we're talking about a seventh chord, we're talking about a one, three, five, seven. When we're talking about a thirteen chord, we're talking about a one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, or some variation of that in there. So you just basically go through the scale. If you want to put a 13 in the scale, if you want to add a 13 to your chord, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's why your 13 chord looks like this. Oh, what? You just blew my mind there. You're welcome. Um, now there are some rules like a 13 chord usually has a 7 in it as well. Sometimes it'll have a 9 or an 11 in it as well. In this case here, we have a 1. A seven, a three, and a thirteen. That's how I'm playing that thirteen chord. If you wanted a nine chord, you could play that note up top. That's a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But I'm playing the octave of it, and it's also a seventh chord. And we throw in the, the nine up top. Make sense? That's how we find extensions. That's a real broad stroke there. There are some rules to this, right? But usually the rules are this. So as you're going up in the extensions, like, like sevens and nines and elevens and thirteens, you're going to drop the less important notes because you only have six strings, right? Uh, Dana Pelkey, thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate that, uh, Dana. Dana, sorry. Thank you so much. Super kind. So as we're going up in these extensions, we will drop the other notes that aren't as, as important, like the one. The one's not so important, even though we talk about it all the time, one's so important. It's not important in the chord when you're extending it because it's assumed. You hear it already. Uh, the next note to go would be the five. The five is pretty consistent. Six out of the seven diatonic chords that appear, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished is the only one that doesn't have the same perfect fifth and it has a flatted five, the five would be the, would be the second note to go because you just don't need it. The bass player is playing the one usually and the five is not as important. Uh, and then the next note to go would probably be the three in the chord, the note that makes it major or minor, you know. Uh, and then really you, you could include all the other notes in there. Um, but there's some rules, what, which ones you might drop uh, before another, okay? Okay, this is my friend Alex. Um, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to her in a minute. And in fact, I'm probably going to have to prep here in just a minute. So, um, 
in about five minutes or so, I'll, I'll need to go to prep Alex how to join the live broadcast. So we're gonna do a live Instagram interview with Alex Klein, also known as Alex Plays Dobro. She is a famous songwriter, producer here in Nashville, multi-instrumentalist. She is a beast. She's amazing. And you don't want to miss this. At 1 p.m. Central Standard Time on Instagram, so right after this broadcast, we're going to be live there. I want you to join me there, okay? If you're not in my Instagram, then you need to be. So join me there. This is something new that we may be doing. I don't know. We're going to see. We'll see how the turnout is. If there's a great turnout, we'll do it. Um, Otherwise, my time could be used in other places, right? So join me there, and I'll need to tell her how to do that here in just a minute. I noticed earlier you played a G chord only fretting the top and bottom strings. What is that? So I did, I did this version. That's my favorite G chord right there. So there's that version. There's lots of versions of the G chord, right? This one, and 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 this one. Lots of G chords there, right? But this one I like a lot, and I dropped that sec that first finger, and I mute the fifth string because it just sounds good to me. I just like it. Cool. Yeah. Eric, do you play in the style of R&B? Yeah, I suppose uh, I suppose I do sometimes. Jeff Height, thanks for the explanation of extensions and all the other great knowledge. Oh, you're so welcome, Jeff. Thank you so much for the donation. Super kind. And I might have a video on this on YouTube, Jeff. I've just done like so many that I don't know what I have and what I don't anymore. So you might search your guitar stage chords and see what comes up. Like I know I I know I teach about seventh chords, okay? For sure, which is the same methodology there on how to find this stuff, okay? It's the same method. Do you have any music theory tips for writing melodies over a chord pattern? When to hit the bass notes and what scales match a basic chord pattern? Aiden, this is basic music theory. It's the stuff that I teach inside of the free course. So I would highly suggest you do that. You need a basic idea of music theory and it takes a little minute, it takes a minute. Doesn't take a long time, but it takes a minute. And so basically when you're in a key, the same notes match the same chords. And what I mean by that is they all work together. If you're in the same key and those chords are playing, then you can play pretty much any note that's within that key and it's gonna sound pretty good, okay? Then it's just a matter of um, then it's just a matter of getting good at phrasing, okay? But if you're in a particular key, which if you know what that is, I show that, I show that to you inside the system, then when you're playing the chords for that key, then you can play the scale over that key and it's gonna sound pretty good because they all match. It's like matching colors, if you will, okay? Could you show me some hand stretching exercises for avoiding inju injuries? Strained my hand trying to avoid. Uh, BJ, yes. So one that you can do is this. So just take your hand, put it forward. You can do it individually with each one of your fingers, or you can just pull the whole hand back like that, etc. That's a good stretching exercise. And you don't want to try to do this really quickly. You just want to sit there comfortably. Create a little bit of tension, you know, pulling back. This is yoga, by the way. If this feels good to you, you should try yoga. God, it feels good. Sometimes a lot more than other times. Sometimes it's it's just showing up and doing it. And But for the most part, for me, I love the way it feels because you're stretching. So, um, so like just doing that right there is great exercise. Also, the, the other way. I have a video for that with some other exercises on YouTube if you search your guitar stage carpal tunnel. One of my students developed carpal tunnel. He wasn't listening to what I would say every time and he was just manhandling the neck and he actually developed carpal tunnel. He's an artist, uh, Jay Ragsdale. He's a great guy, great artist, amazing singer, great writer, a uh, great player. And uh, But he developed carpal tunnel because he was fretting the guitar incorrectly, yeah. <laughs> yeah all right good how many folks we got in here all right we're still we're still rocking it strong by the way friends if you would like this video 
like it, like it, like it. If you can get up to 300 here in the next minute or so, next couple of minutes, that would be great. And also share this with a friend. If you haven't shared it with a friend already, then please do that. And also please take advantage of the free course I'm giving you guys today. Because when once you do, and we sit in these broadcasts, you are going to understand so much more about the guitar. If you don't believe me, if you've been through the free course uh, right now and you can hear my voice, please let other people know in the chat right now so it's not just coming from me. I don't get anything for this course. I give it out for free. But please let other people know because even though, uh, even though that is true, uh, they're going to believe you probably more than they would believe me. So if you've been through those first 30 videos and they absolutely changed your life and understanding the guitar, please let other people know so they believe it so they'll get in there so when we do these broadcasts, we can even get into more, you know, thicker stuff uh, because we got the basics covered, okay? That would be, that'd be a dream of mine. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, Pat, I think someone mentioned it. Oh yeah, bottom left corner next to the smiley face, you'll see a, a dollar symbol. That's how you can donate. Okay, great. Just want to say thank you. I joined a few years ago and it was never disappointed. Wherever I run into a problem, I find the answer uh, within the UGS program. I, I play every day since I joined the program. Yay, Natalie, I love that. Thank you so much for letting me know. That means a lot. Thank you. I've, le I've learned my pentatonic scales and my major scale. How do I make them sound awesome? Jay, on YouTube, search Your Guitar Sage Minimalistic. Do that because that explanation is going to take a little bit and you're gonna, you got to watch that video, okay? If you're in UGS already, watch Minimalistic Blues. That'll give you the basic idea. Or also, I'll have another video out there. It's a longer one. It's a live broadcast and it's how to search your guitar stage chords, melodies, your guitar stage chords, scales, because in both of those, I talk about this on, on how to do such a thing. Okay. Really important. When I give you guys these videos to watch, it's not because I'm being lazy and it's not because I don't want to tell you right now, but if I did that, you would be disappointed because I'd be doing that with all these other people and we'd get like two questions answered. So I have to show you, I have to give you the information so that after the broadcast, you'll go and get the full Monty. You'll get the whole enchilada. I know what full Monty means. It means naked, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, you'll get the whole enchilada. Uh, same thing with UGS, okay? All right, friends, I need to prepare here real quickly because I need to tell Alex who I'm going live within five minutes on Instagram. I need to teach her how to do this really quickly. Hopefully, I'll know what to do as well. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Few things here really quickly. Link below. If you haven't already, do it right now, friends. Where the heck are you going that you can't take advantage of a free program that I'm giving you that's going to help you when you join these live broadcasts and you're going to be able to hang, right? It's the link below, yourguitarstage.com slash UGS. There's lots of options. There's paid options. There's discounted options. There's lifetime, monthly, free. Just get in there and take advantage of this, okay? Love you guys. Hey, stay up. Remember, these are unprecedented times, and they're going to be unprecedentedly, unprecedentedly beautiful if you make them that way. If you're filled with fear and you're filled with anguish and everything else, then it'll be that for you. I promise you... The way that you're thinking is going to guide you in what your direction you're going to go. And there's, a, there's something great happening in the world right now. Be part of the, of the good side of this, okay? Not part of the fear side of it. Use responsibility, everything else. But there's no reason to be fearful. Uh, go within. Find that inner peace within yourself. Love on your family. Love on your pets. Love on your guitar. Watch lots of positive videos. Now is the time. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow with another broadcast. We'll do it again tomorrow, okay? Cool? All right, see you.